What's up, everyone? It's your boy NornRad89 here. Today we're going to do a spoiler talk for Snyder Cut, the Justice League that just came out. That's an official spoiler warning, so be warned. If you haven't seen it, I have a non-spoiler review that I previously filmed. I have a card in the top corner, so you can go check that out. So stick around. Let's talk down to the nitty-gritty of all the things that I liked about the Snyder Cut. So let's get down to this video. Roll it. So the Snyder Cut Justice League. I gave it a 9 out of 10 in my non-spoiler review. I thoroughly had a great time with this film. So let's get down in depth with the things that I liked about this compared to the 2017 version. Starting with the characters, I really like the fact that even the side characters like Silas, Cyborg's dad, their relationship is a key and integral part of this film and I really had a great time with that the side characters were shown respect just as much as the main characters, even Lois Lane, her grief, and we really get to feel her loss for Superman and Clark Kent because she's really the only one who can grieve for him in a certain way because she knew both sides of him and there's heavy heavy implications that she's pregnant in this film and everything so it's really got makes them more three-dimensional just makes them more in-depth and you care about this world and it's a world building aspect that i really love go on to the justice league they all have their moments to shine for sure especially flash the changes that they did to him in this one were much better he's such a great character and more useful and he really is sure of himself and knows the limits of his power and what he can do and how he can help everybody and he plays a big part in the third act of the film go on to cyborg which is great too because they cut out all the stuff from his backstory in the previous one and we get all of that in this one and really get he's like the glue that holds them together and you really feel it more in the other one he's kind of the same character but we really didn't know why he was like that and it was just kind of we had to accept it because that's how they cut it and edited the film but in this one we get a clear-cut vision of how he is and why he is the way he is and it makes him so much better as a character and Wonder Woman and Aquaman, Batman and Superman are so much better too in this film because they all have their parts and I love that aspect especially Wonder Woman too because I like that they changed some things about her and made her more brutal in this film and made her the one that was the one bringing the knowledge of the mother boxes to Batman. I thought that was a cool aspect of this film for sure. Now let's get on to the music and the music and the sound mixing was so much better in this one. Even the little nuances of just sound effects made the scene so much better. I think Wonder Woman's theme is a key one for sure that I think for, even for the Amazons, just their whole theme, it felt much better and had like that cool legendary like epic theme to it even flash he had like this kind of techno-y theme when he was doing his abilities and using his powers so it just had these really good subtle nuances that helped the film and made the scenes more powerful compared to that 2017 one for sure and like i said even the trailer music that Zack snyder used it's much more his realm the music in this film and when you Zack snyder is one of those directors that you can't really kind of bring josh whedon in they, their visions clash and it doesn't really fit that well so when they kind of finished it off and used his vision Josh Whedon it didn't really fit at all with what Snyder wanted to do and this one the music and the sound effects do a lot more in assisting the film and making it a better experience for sure and I loved it Now the plot. The plot, the skeleton of the story, is pretty much the same in this film. It's Steppenwolf looking for the mother boxes, trying to serve Darkseid so he can get, like, they can basically take over Earth and everything. So that is the core of the film, and it's still the same in the Justice League joining together. But the journey that Zack Snyder takes us on for these four hours is so much better because it's so much more in-depth and makes it a... Uh, more epic story in every like said facet of the word in my previous review it really is epic because we get that backstory of the gods that um, Wonder Woman brings to Batman telling him about how we are the one planet that stood up to dark side and we fought back and the Green Lanterns and you know Zeus and Ares and all of them teamed up to defeat dark side it's such a great 
backstory and it sucks that they cut so much out of that from the previous one so that does a lot better in building the world as i said like this one is key in the world building that's why i love this four hour version is because it really gets you invested and you can tell that snyder cares about these characters so much so that i really loved and also, like I said, Cyborg and Flash, they play such a more integral part in the story, especially in that third act when they're separating the mother boxes and Flash is doing his powers, circling them and everything. And it starts, you know, he has to go back in time to go back and reverse things so he can hit Cyborg at the right moment. So it's like, oh, it's so perfect that they use these characters in such a way that it they deserve that you know what i mean their powers and being legendary characters of the justice league they really did deserve so much and snyder paid homage to them and i really like that in this one like i said the plot is pretty much skeleton wise the same but just the journey and the way he used the characters and the execution of the story is so much better in this version for sure Now, let's talk about the epic epilogue and amazing cameos at the end. The epilogue I really liked because it carries on from Batman v Superman, really paying homage to, you know, this is a sequel to that film, carrying on that universe because we got that nightmare sequence that we really didn't get any answers to or anything in the previous Justice League. And in this one, we get clear-cut answers about a world that could possibly happen where Lois Lane is killed and Superman basically loses his heart, you know, what he loves in this world and becomes an agent of dark side and it just turns the world into a very very dark place that you don't want to be batman has to team up with the likes of joker and deathstroke and mira from you know because aquaman's dead so she she comes in and everything and cyborgs there flash so it's a really good kind of callback to even the injustice storyline from the games if you're a fan of those games so i really like that then we got the martian manhunter cameo which is really cool i didn't think was fan service at all because we had storyboards from this way way back when before this film came out in 2017 so i knew Zack snyder we knew this was his vision and this was something that he was looking to do in the first place was include these characters and i think martian manhunter he was Maybe a little bit underutilized, but maybe not, because I like the fact that he was kind of more that third party just outside. He knew the Justice League existed, and he was another superpower letting them know, I can see you guys, I'm here to help you too, I'm glad you're together, we're going to protect this Earth kind of thing, even though he didn't step in in the third act and help them fight Steppenwolf or anything like that add in steppenwolf is also i have to mention this a, such an amazing villain better improvement in this one too for sure because he's more instead of a cookie cutter villain he's three-dimensional as well with that wanting to please dark side because he you know messed up and he wants to be by his side again you know what i mean so he's trying to get the mother boxes together to offer up earth and the anti-life equation so it's a really good more in-depth villain that you can really kind of feel with even though he's a villain you can kind of see why he's doing what he's doing instead of it just being he's basic you know looking for this you know trying to stop us you know and we're trying to stop him because he's trying to capture these boxes like it was just very basic and the josh whedon one didn't really do him justice at all either so as i said like i loved all those things about this film there's so many great things all those things were more improved from the josh whedon one and the sad thing is the only really downside i could think of this film is i think it could be trimmed down a bit and it would be a little tighter, more tight-knit story and more enjoyable, just a little bit, like, you know, maybe, you know, 20 minutes or so. But it's still a really great film. I was invested and I really liked it. And the fact that if we don't get more carry-ons from this story, it's going to hurt for sure. It's going to be one of those films that, like, I really am dying to see a sequel. So it's like, if that doesn't happen it's really going to hurt. But as it stands, this is like a hard 9 out of 10 for me. All those things that I just talked about are improvements that I really loved in this version. And as I said, Zack Snyder is a true epic visionary and a beautiful storyteller. And I'm happy that he got to really put his vision on screen and we got to see the Justice League that he really wanted to do. So let me know in the comment section what you guys thought of the film and everything. What were your favorite parts? What did you like, dislike? 
then drop a like, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the content that I put out. Stick to the channel. Have a safe and happy day, guys. Peace out.